kevbates.tv and clicking on the radio icon. This morning, our Way to a Wonderful Life message is titled, <clears throat> Quotes from Leo Buscaglia. If you, if you can't think of how to spell his name, it's difficult. It's Leo Buscaglia. It's B-U-S-C-A-G-L-I-A. And these are quotes that so many people have found an assurance with and a confidence with and an inspiration with throughout the years. And I actually had lost touch with, with, with his work uh, for about 10 years. And I, someone brought it to my attention, and I revisited just some of the wisdom that he has to share with all of us. And when we think about what he's telling us, we realize that he's just giving us the same, the same message, the same philosophy, the same inspiration that the Mastermind Jesus has given us, only is presented in a different, in a different uh, wording. But the word, the the essence of the philosophy, the essence, the essence of what he's telling us, is the same. That Jesus, Jesus was telling us that God is love, and love is God. That we must love God first, love love our neighbor equally important. He said, love our neighbor as ourself. So well, you know that love is the key. So God is life, God is love, God is truth. And we know that we are life, but we know that we can love. So we know that we're part of God. So as we find within our mind and our heart and our soul that absolute assurance that we're part of God, then everything starts working in our life in a wonderful and marvelous way. So Leo Buscaglia, <clears throat> this is from his writings, he says, A wonderful realization will be the day you realize that you are unique, in all the world there is nothing that is an accident you are a special combination for a purpose and don't let anyone tell you otherwise even if they tell you that purpose is an illusion so live the illusion if you have to you are that combination so that you can do what is essential for you to do don't ever believe that you have nothing to contribute the world is an incredibly unfulfilled tapestry and only you can fulfill that tiny space that is yours. <clears throat> he tells us that love is life, and if you miss love, you miss life. Love is not a thing. It is not lost when given. You can offer your love completely to hundreds of people and still retain the same love you had originally. The fact that I can plant a seed and it becomes a flower, share a bit of knowledge and it becomes another's, smile at someone and receive a smile in return are to me continual spiritual exercises to love others you must first love yourself relish love in your old age <clears throat> aged love is like aged wine it becomes more satisfying more refreshing more valuable more appreciated and more intoxicating life is an uncharted territory it reveals its story one moment at a time to us. There are two big forces at work in the world, external and internal. We have very little control over external forces such as tornadoes and earthquakes, floods, disasters, illness and pain. What really matters is the internal force. So how do I respond to those disasters over that I have complete, over that, I have complete control. I have complete control on how I respond to everything outside of me. Everything outside of me. We can only give away what we have. If we have love, we can give it. If we don't have it, we, we don't have it to give. So as we live now with the attitude of living now in the present moment, when we are eating, eat. When you are loving, love. When you are talking with someone, talk. When you are looking at a flower, look, catch the beauty of the moment. It is paradoxical that many educators and parents still differentiate between a time for learning and a time for play without seeing the vital connection between them. What we call the secret of happiness is no more a secret than our willingness to choose life, to choose life. Even after centuries of human interacting, children still continue to rebel against their parents and siblings. Young marriages look upon their in-laws and parents as obstacles to their independence and growth. Parents view their children as selfish ingrates. Husbands desert their wives and seek greener fields elsewhere. 
wives form relationships with heroes of soap operas who vicariously bring excitement and romance into their empty lives. Workers often hate their bosses and co-workers and spend miserable hours with them day after day. On a larger scale, management cannot relate with labor. Each accuses the other of unreasonable self-interest and narrow-mindedness. Religious groups often become entrapped, each in a provincial dogma resulting in hate and vindictiveness in the name of God. Nations battle blindly under the shadow of the world annihilation for the realization of their personal rights. Members of these groups blame rival groups for their continual sense of frustration, impotence, lack of progress, and communication. We have obviously not learned much over the years. We have not paused long enough to consider the simple truth that we humans are not born with particular attitudinal sets regarding other persons. We are taught into them. We are the future generation's teachers. We are, therefore, the perpetrators of the confusion and alienation we abhor and which keeps us impotent in finding new alternatives. It is up to us to diligently discover new solutions and learn new patterns of relating, ways more conducive to growth and to peace and to hope and to loving coexistence. Anything that is learned can be unlearned and relearned. In this process called change lies our real hope. In this process called change lies our real hope. And so what he's speaking to here is something that we read in the Bible, but something that people have misunderstood so many times and throughout history, and that's where we we hear in religion that we're born in sin. We're born in sin. We're not born sinful. We're born into a sinful world, a world that's filled with self-inflicted nonsense. And unfortunately, most of us learn to adapt to that self-inflicted nonsense, and we take on the biases, and we take on the the resistance, and we take on the the, the prejudices and the divisiveness of the world so we 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 have to stop that we're this we're the next generation's teachers so if we want to teach the next generation to have a more peaceful and loving world we have to learn we have to learn to find the solution that brings forth that more peaceful and loving world into our own personal lives and as we do it in our own personal lives it creates a domino effect in the world in which we live that's why jesus said love Love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and equally important, love your neighbor as yourself. And since we know that God, the word God is, an, uh, is a word that's synonymous with spirit, with the Almighty, with our Creator, with our Maker, with love and truth and life, and we know that we are life, we know that we're to love life, and we're to love the truth, and we're to love the world in which we live, to love it enough to make it a better place for everyone. The easiest thing to be in the world is you. The most difficult thing to be is what other people want you to be. So don't let anyone put you in that position. Don't hold to anger, hurt, or pain. They steal our energy and keep us from love. Change is the end result of all true learning. In other words, when we learn things, we change. You know, when we come into this world, we come into this world filled with curiosity and filled with wonder, with no no feelings of being separated or divided or, or any kind of racial conflicts or any kind of religious <clears throat> divisiveness or any of that, any kind of political feelings in any way, shape, or form. We come into this world with a, as a clean slate, so to speak, with a clean slate, and then we start learning things and start putting them on that that. that blackboard, that screen of life, and we start believing certain things, and as we believe certain things and things in our experience become to validate those things that we believe, but we have to be careful of what we believe. We have to be careful of what we accept. Because the opposite of love is not hate, it's apathy. It's not giving a damn. If somebody hates me, they must feel something, or they couldn't possibly hate. Therefore, there's some way in which I can get to them. 
So the opposite of love is not hate, it's apathy. It's not, it's not caring. It's, it's, it's indifferent. If somebody hates us, then they must feel something towards us, or they possibly couldn't hate us. Therefore, there's some way in which we can get to them. And that's why Jesus said, love thy enemies. Do good to those who persecute you. Because if they have those feelings, there's a way we can work with that. There's a way we can work with that, with knowing the truth about them and letting our consciousness, letting our soul, letting our spirit on the unseen communicate with them in a loving way, in a way that says we're one. We're one in the spirit. We're one in God. So never idealize others. They will never live up to your expectations. Don't overanalyze your relationships. Stop playing games. A growing relationship can only be nurtured by genuineness, by genuineness. Let's just think about these words. There's so much that he's giving us this morning. This is Leo Buscaglia, B-U-S-C-A-G-L-I-A, Leo Buscaglia. For those who are on the Internet, you can go to Google and Google Leo Buscaglia, or you can go to Bing or Yahoo or MSN and Google Leo Buscaglia, and you'll find a whole lot more of what I'm giving you this morning. He tells us the majority of us lead quiet, unheralded lives as we pass through this world. There will most likely be no ticker tape parades for us, no monuments created in our honor, but that does not lessen our possible impact. For there are scores of people waiting for someone just like us to come along, people who will, will appreciate our compassion, our unique talents, someone who will live a happier life merely because we took the time to share what we had to give. Too often, we underestimate the power of a touch, a smile, a kind word, or a listening ear, an honest compliment, or the smallest act of caring, all of which have a potential to turn a life around. It's overwhelming to consider the continuous opportunities there are to make our love felt, to make our love felt. Let's go back and let's look at these words again. These are, these are very important for most of us. He writes, the majority of us lead quiet, unheralded lives as we pass through this world. There will most likely be no ticker tape parades for us, no monuments created in our honor, but that does not lessen our possible impact, for there are scores of people waiting for someone just like us to come along, people who will appreciate our compassion, our unique talents, Someone who will live a happier life merely because we took the time to share what we had to give. Too often we underestimate the power of a touch, a smile, a kind word, or a listening ear, an honest compliment, or the smallest act of caring, all of which have a potential to turn a life around. It's overwhelming to consider the continuous opportunities there are to make our love felt. You know, this, is, this is just so marvelous and it's so wonderful. And it tells us that there's more to us than what we see. There's more to these, these, these random acts of kindness that we do just spontaneously as we go through our daily activities of life. There's more to us. There's more to our presence than what we're, we're, we're ever fully aware of. That we are a spirit having a human experience. The intelligence of God clothed our spirit in human form so that we could share God's love and God's happiness and God's joy and God's peace and God's harmony and God's beauty with all those we encounter in the world. And this is what he's telling us. says, the hardest battle you are ever going to have to fight is the battle to be just you, to be just you, because people want us to conform. They want us to be like everyone else. That's why there's so many massive groups of people, you know, all these megachurches. It's all these people looking for other people to be like them. But nobody is like us. God does not Xerox. God does not Xerox. We're unique individuals. We are so unique that 
even though there's billions of people on this planet, each and every one of us has our own unique set of fingerprints because God created us to be a unique expression of itself. The infinite gave us infinite uniqueness, all of us. Buscalgia writes, I exist, I am, I am here, I am becoming. I make my own life and no one else makes it for me. I make my own life and no one else makes it for me. This is Leo Buscaglia, B-U-S-C-A-G-L-I-A. I exist, I am here, I am becoming. I make my own life and no one else makes it for me. I must face my own shortcomings, my own mistakes, my own transgressions. No one can suffer my non-being as I do, but tomorrow is another day, and I must decide to leave my bed and live again. And if I fail, I don't have the comfort of blaming you or life or God. That's why Jesus told the man, pick up your bed and walk, because life is waiting for you to be a part of it in a greater way. Life is waiting for you to leave behind all that, all that has severed your love of life and created within you a consciousness that holds you back from experiencing life in, the, in a more wonderful way. If you don't like the situation you're in, if you're unhappy, if you're lonely, if you don't feel that things are happening, change your situation. Create a new backdrop in your mind. Love is always bestowed as a gift freely, willingly, and without expectation. We don't love to be loved. We love to love. Worry never robs tomorrow of its sorrow. It only saps today of its joy. In other words, it only takes out the joy of today. So we must realize within ourselves there's something more going on for us than what we do, what we're being, our work, even our play. There's always more going on with us. Our talents are a gift that God gives to us. What we make of our talents is our gift back to God. We must understand this. Life is a paradise for those who love many things with a passion. You love life with a passion. If you're passionate about life, about uh, living it, Life is a paradise. Don't spend your precious time asking why isn't the world a better place. It will only be time wasted. The question to ask is how can I make it better? To that, there is an answer. To that, there is an answer. Don't spend your precious time asking why isn't the world a better place? It will only be time wasted. The question to ask is how can I make it better? To that, there is an answer. To that, there is an answer. Those who think they know it all have no way of finding out that they don't. <laughs> we want to understand that. Those who think they know it all have no way of finding out that they don't. It's sad when you think about it. Only when we give joyously, joyfully, without hesitation or thought of gain, can we truly know what love means. You are the only you. You are the best you. You will always be the second best to anyone else. So always hold on to who you are. Hold on to that unique self. Don't let anyone tell you. Don't let anyone diminish your spirit by putting you down. And don't self-depreciate yourself, most of all. Ancient Egyptians believed that upon death they would be asked two questions and their answers would determine whether they could, where, where they could continue their journey in the afterlife. Two questions, and it would determine how they would continue their journey in the afterlife. The first question was, did you bring joy? And the second question was, did you find joy? Did you bring joy? Did you find joy? Too often, once again, we underestimate the power of a touch, a smile, a kind word, a listening ear, an honest accomplishment, or the smallest act of caring, all of which have the potential to turn life around, all of which have the potential to turn life around. 
Most of us remain strangers to ourselves, hiding who we are and ask other strangers hiding who they are to love us. Love is life. If you miss love, you miss life. The most unfortunate thing that happens to a person who fears failure is that they limit themselves by becoming afraid to try anything new. They limit themselves. Only the weak are cruel. Gentleness can only be expected from the strong. Only the weak are cruel. Gentleness can only be expected from the strong. This is from Leo Buscaglia, B-U-S-C-A-G-L-I-A. Google it. Google his name. <clears throat> After all the wrong is done, it is past and cannot be changed. We have only the present and the future upon which to move forward. Every moment spent in unhappiness is a moment of happiness lost. Every moment spent in unhappiness is a moment of happiness lost. To try, it, to try is to risk failure, but risk must be taken because the greatest hazard of life is to risk nothing. The person who risks nothing does nothing, has nothing, is nothing. They may avoid suffering and sorrow, but they simply cannot learn and feel and change and grow and live and love. Let's realize once and for all that we created time, and let's not let ourselves become a slave of time. We created time, and let's not let ourselves become a slave of time by thinking that age or time is somehow, is somehow against us. Risk must be taken because the greatest hazard in life is to risk nothing. To risk nothing. It's amazing. And there's some amazing wisdom. There are scores of people waiting for someone just like us to come along. Let's realize this. People who will appreciate our compassion, our encouragement, who will need our unique talent. Someone who will live a happier life merely because we took the time to share what we had to give. We took the time to share what we had to give. And let's end this this morning with this, these words, and this is very important. Our talents are the gift that God gives to us, what we make of our talents, our ability to love, our ability to be friendly, our ability to be kind, our ability to be understanding and compassionate and empathetic. Our talents are the gift that God gives to us, our creativity. What we make of our talents is our gift back to God. And so it is. Amen. Thank you, Leo Buscaglia, B-U-S-C-H-E-L-I-A, for these words of wisdom this morning that creates within us a greater understanding, a greater level of feeling that closeness to God. Because love is God and God is love. Life is God. Our God is life. Let's just know that life and love keep us healthy and happy and prosperous, open and receptive to God's givingness and livingness and forgivingness through each and every one of us. Let's let that be so today and let it be so every day. And so it is, once again.